It's incredibly disappointing that the Sussex surname has been largely abandoned by the elite of the United States. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the official YouTube channel for all news related to Her Majesty, Kate Middleton. I just found out that Harry and Meghan are an employer that makes their employees sign non-disclosure agreements and discriminates against people who work for other companies. A mutual agreement between Harry and Meghan should be a condition of employment for anyone working for the couple. Since Harry and Meghan clearly cannot be trusted with private information, their loved ones, acquaintances, and co-workers would be wise to take precautions. Meg has boasted on multiple occasions that she is free to say whatever is on her mind because the royal family trusts her and did not make her sign a non-disclosure agreement. The royal family has learned from that error and will not repeat it. Harry and Meghan say they need privacy but are frustrated that nobody can see them when they're not out in public. Are they aware that nobody can see what happens when people close their doors? Most mature people realize that private matters are none of the public's business, but Harry seems to think that the general populace will be interested in the details of his life that he plans to reveal. People seem to be moving away from the pair. Since Gail King is a trusted friend of Oprah's, she arranged for Oprah to appear on her talk show in New York. Oprah, a seasoned interviewer who does extensive research on her guests, claims she was completely blindsided by the media frenzy surrounding her interview with Harry and Meghan. She states that she, like the rest of the audience, was completely taken aback. And yet, she had the foresight to ask the right questions to set the stage for Harry and Meghan to level their accusations. Meg displays a number of characteristics that are indicative of someone with narcissistic personality disorder. Once committed to a partner, a narcissist will cut them off from their support system. It would be boring to list all of Meghan's power moves in the relationship. Contrary to popular belief, those two were never phased in. Markle believed that her princely husband's titles would be enough to gain entry to the most exclusive social circles, but from the moment they landed, they were met with hostility. Sure. They've used public relations to make an appearance here and there, like when they spoke to a nearly empty United Nations plenary hall. New York City's intrepid Veterans Day dinner is another option. Both were unsuccessful, drawing mostly raised eyebrows and some ridicule. Even though Barack Obama celebrated his 60th birthday with some 500 of America's most prominent Democrats and other dignitaries, they were not invited. They also did not receive an invitation to this year's Met Gala, which was attended by many famous people. Neither of those times could be described as phased in. The East Coast is a long way from Montecito, you might object, where they currently reside. That's exactly right. They didn't even get an Oscar nomination this year. And when compared to New York City and Martha's Vineyard, Hollywood is just down road. As for Markle's acting experience, it's limited to the small screen, and she's obviously not very good at it. However, even that was not helpful and likely even counterproductive. So, what went wrong during their ascent from British royal households to the upper echelons of East Coast and West Coast American society? That's right, they actually did it. To begin with, they don't even remotely resemble royals. Their decidedly unroyal whining started as soon as they landed in the United States after Megxit, confirming what people already knew from transatlantic rumors, that they were both badly dressed up trash. Not royal in the conventional sense. Instead, they're the typical pompous, entitled HOI Poloi. And their Oprah appearance only solidified it. After all, why would a royal, or anyone even halfway decent, Use Oprah's open-mouthed chat format to expose their innermost thoughts and feelings to the entire world? So that was probably the final straw in their demise. It was unseemly to insult the British royal family on the Megamouth talk show from the safety of the United States. People in high society shy away from the spotlight instead of welcoming it. Except for them. From that point on, things have only gotten worse. The passing of Harry's grandparents, one of whom was the monarch of 16 countries, only served to highlight their mutual awfulness. To Harry in particular, who was too young to remember either set of grandparents before they passed away. And now we have the Netflix documentary series and Harry's spare memoir. 
both of which promise more sleazy, miserable, and implausible revelations. Even just the trailer is stunning. Excessive use of the dramatic triad of acting, staging, and duration. Done and dusted. This is a roundabout way of asking and answering the question of why any members of the top of U.S. society, defined as the wealthy, the famous, and the powerful, would hold them in such high regard as to want to spend time with them. Most especially when, as the aforementioned images show, they have nothing royal to offer. These individuals can see, at a glance, that they stand to gain nothing and stand to lose a great deal by associating with Harry and Meghan. It seems that Markle has always confused royalty with fame, and now she is neither. Harry, how sad. No one but himself can shoulder the blame for this. In addition, David Beckham has earned even more of my admiration. His actions have demonstrated his position. His son's wedding cost several million dollars, but he chose not to invite the Markles. He stood in line to show his respect for the Queen. Just recently, he was in Boston for Earthshot 2022. This demonstrates that he is exonerating himself from the obligation to comment on Harry and Meghan. How could you possibly put your faith in them? What's the point of being friends with them if everything you say will be twisted and used in whatever media drama they're trying to promote at the time? They are supposed to have their private lives, but instead they constantly try to make headlines and draw attention to themselves. I thought that was the polar opposite of being private. I have mixed feelings about their decision to seek privacy. Get moving already. It's too bad, because I thought they'd inject some much-needed levity and youth into the royal family. Harry was a troubled guy who needed to find himself. Spare was a perfect description of him. I've heard over and over that he has to look out for his loved ones, though from what I can only guess. But I just watched the trailer for their Netflix show. When I am feeling down and out, the last thing I want is for someone to take a picture of me like that. They obviously sold their dignity for airtime. There is no longer any regard, compassion, or understanding. In regards to the Netflix contract, it includes footage from before, during, and after their wedding. Has it occurred to anyone to wonder why this video was recorded? Was this Netflix documentary conceived from the start? It seems to me that this is the case. I don't care about either of them anymore, but I do think that she's the one in charge and that Prince Harry is just a puppet for her. Almost, but not quite, I feel sorry for him. Furthermore, Markle is a walking faux pas. She never changes her attitude that the rules don't concern her. She never showed any cultural sensitivity by adhering to any when in Rome customs. Someone at Admiralty House in Sydney wore a flying cup and saucer of tea when something didn't suit her. And that's Australia, where we're pretty laid back. Really, she is just a commoner. All I have to report for today is over. Generally speaking, what do you think of them? Leave a comment below and let me know what you think. To show your appreciation, feel free to like and share my video whenever it piques your interest. Additionally, please subscribe to the Royal Family News Update channel to show your support. Now, I appreciate you watching, so thank you, and have a good night and I'll see you tomorrow.